To start with, let's look at the impedance that would be caused by a resistor. So we're going to look at the, repeat, the impedance caused by a particular resistor, and let's say that this resistor just has some base value of R. Now, there is going to be some sort of voltage that is across this resistor right here. And because this is a rather sort of simple circuit and there's a single resistor, whatever this voltage is is across the resistor, it's the same voltage as whatever source that might be. And in the same way that there is a voltage running across this resistor, there is also going to be some sort of current flowing through this resistor. So there's going to be some current flowing through the resistor. And because our source is a function of time, our uh, current is also going to be a function of time as well. To start our analysis, let's recall that the impedance, and I'm going to denote it here with an R, the impedance across the resistor is the relationship of that voltage source and that current source. And again, as we've seen, we can take these time-based signals and turn them into phasers, which I'm going to represent as complex values here because they have the imaginary values in the exponent. For the sake of argument, let's imagine that the voltage source that's running through the resistor you know, has some magnitude of V0, that it's a cosine function, and it has some frequency and some magnitude and some phase. And what we've seen is how to turn this into a phasor. And so that would be the phasor representation of the voltage across the resistor. And so we will say that this phasor right here is equal to V hat. So that'll be the phasor for the voltage. Now to complete our representation of impedance, we also need to know the current flowing through the resistor. But thankfully, because we have V equals IR, we know that whatever the voltage is across that resistor, if we divide it by the resistance, then we've got a current function. So it's pretty straightforward to say that this right here, if I take the previous phasor representation, is the current phasor through the uh, resistor. And so this function right here will be I hat. And so if I take both of these values here, and I take this one here, and I plug it in here, and I take this one here, and plug it in over here, what we end up with is a relationship that tells us, in the frequency domain, what is the impact of a particular resistor? What is its impedance in the frequency domain? And as you might you know, sort of be, you know, not be surprised to find out, a resistor really doesn't have that complicated behavior because all of these terms eventually cancel out and the impedance of a resistor is simply just its resistance. And so if this is your first time kind of coming into this concept, you may say, oh, whoop de doo well, you found that its impedance is R and its resistance is also R. But what we'll see is when we go to calculate uh, capacitors and inductors, this, this expression right here is not going to be simply just the uh, resistance, uh, excuse me, not just the capacitance or the inductance, they'll have other terms in there that are based upon their frequency. But the way that you want to interpret this is that the resistor, um, its effect in the complex domain, there's nothing in here about frequency, there's nothing in here about phase. Basically, a resistor has no impact on the frequency or the phase of the circuit. And this should sort of follow in our intuition that resistors simply just drop voltage through them and really don't affect the remainder of the circuit.